Hello, everybody. We're with Len Han, who is the, the founder of Han Shoes. And we're going to talk about his invention, which is coming to Kickstarter real soon, uh, which is a, a, a shoe with an elliptical suspension, which stores and returns energy. I've tested them. I've run them on the road. And while this first, uh, this initial prototype is quite heavy at about uh, 15.34 ounces or 435 grams, it runs incredibly light. I can honestly say that the technology makes this shoe feel like about 11 ounces. And Len's gonna tell us how uh, weight is gonna be reduced, but this is a very exciting innovation. So it's not a plate, it's a, it's a ellipses that store and return energy. So Len, tell us a bit about yourself and where you're going uh, and a lot about the shoe, please. Well, thank you, Sam, very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, first, let me address that weight question you brought up. Okay, so our shoe uses a pair of carbon fiber ellipses and a hinge, okay? You're going off of the forefoot like a little gymnast vault. Um, but because of the carbon, we, we, we went to a, a uh, sports car kind of a tread pattern. Well, we overbuilt it. Um, and so we're going to cut over an ounce out of the outsole, uh, thin it up. We're going to change the geometry of the lugs for increased traction. And then the shoe uh, will come in under 14 at that point for a size nine. Um, but you're right. Uh, all of our wear chest reviews have told us that it runs because of the energetic return and transfer from the uh, suspension that it runs very light. And why would I do this? You know, you, 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 you want to ask, why would I do this? I started, okay, so I've run uh, 21 marathons in my career so far, 16 Chicago's. And in the very first marathon I completed after a couple of injured attempts uh, in 95, um, I was really unhappy with the state of the footwear that I was running. You know, skis had gotten so much better, downhill racing skis, Bicycle frames were starting to show up in carbon, you know, Kestrel at that time. And those were and, truly uh, the dark ages for running shoes in the 90s. Yeah, but, but, but shoes were still, yeah. you know, shoes were still um, the same kinds of animals they'd been for, you know, a long time. Um, and so I took a literal clean sheet of paper and said, and, and I, I'm used to putting things on my feet that make me go fast. Okay. So, you know, ski boots and downhill racing skis and cross country skis and, and inline skates. Okay. You know, what a great way to go 30 miles an hour is, you know, with a pair of five, five wheel inline skates. So it's like, well, what if we could do something like that with footwear, you know? And at the same time um, that I'm having these thoughts training for marathons, I'm also walking at O'Hare back and forth uh, on, in my business travel on the black rubber moving sidewalks they had there. Mm -hmm. And those things were made by Dunlop. They were tensioned to 3000 pounds. Uh, I talked to the people who make them. I called Dunlop. Um, and I ended up running a half marathon. One evening, I went out there and I ran a half marathon on the Black Harbor Moving Sidewalks, which were shut off. Okay, they were, they were stopped that evening for whatever reason. And that experience was an epiphany. So uh, the experience of this. They're suspended in a way, the, much as a treadmill is kind of suspended also. Well, Okay, but, uh, you know, a treadmills, it's, 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 it, you had to be there. Um, okay. A treadmill doesn't get to it because of the delay, the slowness of the movement. This thing was very responsive and very taut, like an inch of travel, mm -hmm. okay? Even running, uh, not like a trampoline where you sink a long way. Um, and I was fast on this, on this moving sidewalk. I was fast for me. Um, and felt incredibly fresh at the end of it and, and resolved to get that kind of suspension effect into a shoe. Okay, Long tell us the story of how that happened and what, well, what we got here. I could, I could elaborate on that for way too long probably, but, but you know, I went through high volume air designs. I have some of those prototypes here. We'll look at them later. I went through uh, structures of different types, polymer structures, and then I got into uh, composites and ended up, this is, this is one that I made in my oven, you know, 
in, in 2002, this is one of the original suspension elements um, after I went through a whole series of smaller suspension elements, I, I got with some ski racing engineers. I, I, I was able at a trade show to talk to some ski racing engineers and found out, you know, the question was, how do you get torsional stability into a racing ski, you know, for ice hold, edge hold on ice, that sort of thing. And after those conversations, I was able to make a much larger suspension element that had really outstanding lateral stability. Well, it's a lot like the camber in a uh, Nordic classic ski in some ways. Exactly. Or, or, or the same camber in a downhill racing ski. You can feel both ends of the ski working as you stand on the outside you know, ski. In a classic ski, you've got a, a, a curve underfoot and you, you drive down and weight it and then release. You know, right. It has to do with keeping the wax from sticking right. when, you're, when you're gliding. I've, I've put on plenty of pine tar in my day too. So I know what you're talking about. Um, you know, put the green clister under the, under the foot. Um, so I was able to build these suspension elements, which then ended up going into this kind of a shoe where because of the energetic compression and response, you know, when you land on this thing and your center of gravity behind your belly button mm -hmm. goes from the landing phase to the midfoot, the heel extends, okay? And it doesn't bounce you up. You've got too much weight, mass for that. Okay, it doesn't bounce you up. What happens when the heel extends? It preloads the forefoot like a teeter totter. I absolutely felt that on the run. It was a very smooth uh, tr transition, and then there was. I definitely felt the forefoot. Tell us about the forefoot. Well, so so what you did when the heel extended, you did the holy grail of footwear. You transferred energy from the landing to the forefoot, and then. As the ball of your foot rolls forward onto the hinge, it gives you mechanical advantage for the hinge to push you off into the next stride. And, and people, you know, all these crazy shoe designs, a lot of them that really never lived up to, to their billing, you know, a lot of these crazy shoe designs that have all kinds of stuff in the heel never have anything in the forefoot. And there's a reason for that. It's hard. It's hard, it's hard to do something... Nike has tried it with the uh, AirPod, particularly in the Tempo Next and the um, and the Alpha Fly. Uh, it's a different feeling than that. It's it, those are sort of uh, they feel like an AirPod bouncing, not bouncing you, but sort of drive uh, rebounding and driving you forward. Whereas yours feels much more like a smoothly flowing, compressing and releasing hinge. It really does. I can feel it, sort of a hinged effect. Right, exactly, exactly. And the geometry, okay, so, you know, one of the aspects of the shoe is the, is the rocker mm -hmm. from heel to toe. Well, the, the, by, by being able to go to the larger suspension element that we went to, you know, a long time ago, by being able to do that, we were able to put in the kind of rocker profile we were looking for. And because this thing is rigid, unlike, you know, um, uh, urethane, encapsulated air, right? Um, because it's rigid, um, the geometry rolls forward along with your center of gravity, along with your foot anatomy. Mm -hmm. And then and then one of the things, I don't know if you're a big fan of, of um, and anatomic uh, lasts, okay? Uh, Foot-shaped lasts. Um, We worked with a South Korean brand, Trexta, to use there. They're one of the few brands in the world that uses an anatomic last. We got an agreement with them to start with their last and modify it for suspension. Um, and because of that, and then and then I went out and then I went out and actually measured different people's feet, okay, to find out where the first and fifth metatarsals were and where the calcaneus was, the heel bone to place the suspension in the shoe. And because of that, when you roll off that forefoot, mm -hmm. you're rolling squarely into the big toe, which is which is the seat of your power into the next stride. That as well, it was, it was distinct. Uh, and the anatomical toe box was very comfortable, very, very well held. Um, 
you know, it's we see anatomic more anatomical toe boxes, for example, Topo, Ultra. Uh, but this was a very comfortable fit. I was half a size up from my normal, uh, but my forefoot was very well held and very, and it was very comfortable. Right, right. Now, because it's a size nine, that's the standard for development. Right. I haven't even worn this shoe yet. Oh no! Oh I, no! <laughs> But you're, you're, um, you're smart to stick to size nine um, because that's also the standard for, for weight generally. Uh, some brands don't go that way, but, but uh, we got to right. get you in your own shoes though soon. <laughs> I know. Well, we're, 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 we're working on an 11 and a half last. Okay. <laughs> and, and once I get the suspension figured out for, for that size, now we'll have a range of data points because the suspension, the suspension will be the same size across the full range of shoe sizes. Okay, now how does that work with different weights, uh, different weight runners? Okay, so, so two things about this. Um, we've done a lot of research on the spring rate, and to call this a spring is a misnomer. It's, it, it does so much more than merely being springy. You know, this is a suspension element. Um, it does as much lateral stability as it does vertical suspension. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, but, and it also does, you know, the contouring, the, the rocker function and, and the geometry of, of rolling through the gate. So there's a lot going on here. Um, in different shoe sizes, okay, the, the, the same suspension element with the same composite layup will scale because it's going to be wider in larger shoes. Understood. And if the data supports it, we may go to like a standard weight and a heavyweight suspension as well. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that way we'll have two tiers of in the same size shoe of, of weight range, which which would help if you're if you're a larger person or if you're someone who runs with a backpack, because we get a lot of those people too, the ultra type people. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, I, I weigh 164. Uh, it felt just about right. Um, I, I think maybe because it was a prototype, the forefoot felt like it it could have used a bit more stiffness, a bit more pop. Um, yeah. I'm not sure if, if I need to run in them some more to really determine that, but um, I was looking- Here's, a, here's so, a little secret. I'm, I'm looking at going another two millimeters higher on the forefoot. Oh, good, good. Yeah. That'll it, give you the, that's exactly the pop you're looking for. Okay. <laughs> I've been at it a while, so I feel things. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, now, the shoe, um, you know, at Road Trail Run, um, you know, our audience is, uh, you know, really core runners of all paces, but people, you know, serious about their running, serious about their gear. Um, and, and so as you launch your Kickstarter, what are the different types of runners, walkers that you're, um, you think uh, the Han Shu will uh, best suit or uh, where do you are there some unexpected areas that maybe um, people that aren't runners per se or just do a little bit of running may find benefit in your technology in this approach okay great that's a that's a good question um this first shoe from us okay is going to be kind of the the next version from the factory the next pre-production prototype will be a little bit lighter gray instead of a black Mm -hmm. uh, the orange is going to be a little more toned down, mm -hmm. you know, but it's, it's a, it's a, a fairly toned down looking shoe so that you can wear it in your regular life. You can wear it to work yeah. as a casual shoe, as well as, as for running, you know, you had people try it uh, who are on their feet all day, say on concrete as a work shoe. So we have, yes, we have, um, we have some testimonials at our website, handshoes.com. Uh, we have some testimonials from people who have some, you know, chronic pain, who have some mobility limitations, um, who have worn the shoe and gotten distinct relief from their pain. Okay. Okay. And, and, and the, way that the, 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 the way that it manages the stride energy, the normal peaks on heel in and the peak on, on, on uh, metatarsal toe off, you know, the way that it, it attenuates those and dampens those. Um, accounts for the reduction in, in pain. Now we can't officially say that we haven't run a study on pain reduction. Um, the only study we have run is on O2 reduction, systemic O2 reduction, which was remarkable. 
Oh, tell us about that if you can. Okay, so so back after I got the first version of this that uh, was really working well for us, the, when I ran my first marathon in this shoe. Oh, um, hang on. Okay, now we're out of the smaller suspension elements. Right. Now we're in the full size suspension elements that have the torsional stability. And, and this was the very first shoe. Wow. This was the very first shoe. That's and it was very cool looking. <laughs> it, was, it was based on a new balance, yep. you know, uh, that I liked at the time. Um, ran several pairs of these. Um, and in nine previous marathons, my PR had been uh, 438. Okay. Okay. In this shoe, I was able to cut 15 minutes off, 6%. And went down to a 423. Excellent. And and at the halfway mark in this, and I'd only completed this shoe two days before. Okay. The glue wasn't okay. wasn't dry yet. <laughs> it was. It still smelled. Okay. Um, in in running that marathon at the halfway mark, I thought, wow, you know, I feel pretty. I, I nearly wore a fanny pack with a spare pair of shoes. Right, right, just in case. Yeah, in case they broke, but I didn't. I just thought, let's go for it. Um, and at the halfway mark, I thought, wow, you know, I feel really fresh for the halfway mark of a marathon. I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit. And I did and, and pushed it a little more all through the rest of the marathon and ran a negative split. Ooh, my second wow. half of the marathon was faster than the first. And my last mile, was your my last mile was fastest of all. Well, that's, that's fantastic. How was your training similar? And then how was your recovery? Okay, so I've been a, a CARA, Chicago Area Runners Association, yeah. pace, pace group leader for the 10 minute group yeah. for 17 years. So in all those marathons, my training was exactly identical. Okay, okay, okay. You know, down to the run. That's a good data point. It is, it yep. is. And, and more than cutting 6% off, more than cutting 15 minutes off, was the experience, okay, I'm, I'm an experienced kind of a guy, you know, I, I ski race, I, I skydive for 20 years, um, got my pilot's license in high school, all that sort of thing. So scuba diving, rock climbing, uh, cross country skiing, as you pointed out. Um, and so the experience of that marathon was the crazy thing, because even at that time, Chicago was a 30,000, right. you know, person marathon. And and now it's up to 45,000, okay? So you don't want to have to move through the pack laterally. You don't want to have to, you don't Dog. want to have to yeah. Yeah. weave through traffic. What you'd like to do is move up diagonally. Right, right. In that marathon, I always had accelerator pedal left to go up through the traffic diagonally. And when there was a gap, when there was, you know, a need to, to change position to get in the proper position for a corner, I always had the gas to, to flow, to slide right into it. No kidding. It felt a little bit like being on, on inline skates. Okay. And, and, and how is the, how is the um, stability element here? Uh, often people, um, you know, uh, are directed towards pro, pronation control. Um, I felt they were very stable, but without any overt pronation control, usually stuff on the medial side, rails, firmer foam, et cetera. Okay, so, so Dr. Ni okay, we, now we're back to the O2 consumption. Yes. And, and then I'll move into the, uh, the stability control. Um, when we built this shoe, when it was done, and we started a company to build more of them, um, we went to South Korea and built 50 pairs of these. Oh, okay. okay. And these are the shoes we used for the O2 testing. Okay. And, and prior to all of this, um, I was researching biomechanics and, and talking to orthopedic surgeons and talking with, you know, experienced marathoners and trainers, um, trying to figure out again, from that clean sheet of paper, what would make for the best kind of a device you know, I wasn't even calling it a shoe. It's like, what, what kind of mechanism do you need to be able to run better than using everything we've got so far? Um, 
And I ended up finding Dr. Ben O'Nig up at the University of Calgary in uh, Alberta. And he sent me a bunch of papers. I, I sent him a, you know, a request and some, and some money and he sent me a bunch of papers. And then after I built that shoe and then we built these, we, we did a, an O2 study with Dr. Nig and found, and, and that's on a treadmill, okay? A bunch of guys on treadmills that same day running, you know, half of them running our shoe, half of them running the control shoe, which was a high-end foam shoe, a New Balance, I think. Um, and then they swapped, you know, and we were measuring gas in, gas out for O2 consumption. And the joke, they, the, this lab had run a bunch of O2 head-to-head -head tests like that, and they weren't expecting anything to happen, okay? Uh, the joke about O2 consumption, because that's the most difficult needle to move in testing. You know, a tenth of a percent or two tenths of a percent is a big shift for that testing. Um, and the joke is, well, how do you reduce systemic O2 consumption? That's easy. Sit down, okay? You know, get off the treadmill and sit down. That'll reduce it. But if you're going to keep running, it's not going to go down. Well, with this shoe, with this shoe, we were able to reduce systemic O2 burn by 2.2 percent. Mm. And that's a and that's a this is a fairly crude version of it right. of our shoe. Um, by reducing it that much, and I think we're closer to three now. By reducing it that much the practical effect is like running 0.6 miles less than a marathon. So were both shoes about the same weight? They were a little bit different in weight. And so we weight normalized them. Okay. We, made them we made them all weigh identical. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that, and, and, and that worked, you know, that, that took that out of the equation. Good question though. An excellent, perfect question. So the, the, and, so, the, and so, and so talking with Benno afterwards, um, about this, you know, and he called the, in, in a white paper he released, and, and we can send you the summary, um, in a white paper he released, he called that 2.2% reduction for the same task remarkable, which is, you know, fireworks and, and scoreboard fireworks for a for a, a, an Austrian researcher, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> he, he, very exciting. And we were talking about the whole, because he invented it. Benno invented the whole cushioning, stability motion control paradigm, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, back when he was doing consulting work um, decades ago. And he had found that those three models of shoes in further testing, subsequent testing, had not, had not reduced injury rates. Right, right. Hadn't reduced injury rates. And so when I started again with the clean sheet of paper, looking at building you know, our shoe, I completely skipped the whole notion of, of those three designs, cushioning, stability, motion control, and was looking at slow motion footage of people going through the stride barefoot, okay? Mm -hmm. And going through wearing different kinds of shoes. And when we got into suspension, when we got into cooking these guys in my own oven, okay? And, and working at building them into shoes, I noticed looking at slow motion video of people running on treadmills, I noticed that there was some motion, okay? Um, there was some motion, but there was no complaining about it. Everyone had a different motion. Everyone who runs this has a different slow motion gait profile. Right, right. Almost, almost like a fingerprint. Well, Len, is that because the... Um, uh, the, if you will, the compression of the spring, uh, if you, if you tend it to land more as a supinator, it'll, it'll deform in that area. Uh, whereas if you're more pronator, it'll deform, but not much because they're pretty rigid, right? They, they, they have, because of the ski technology built into these things, they have a lot of lateral stability. Yep. And, and so, and bicycles do this all the time. They love to talk about how they do this, that that you've got a lot of vertical compliance in your bike frame for cushioning, yeah. but a lot of torsional rigidity so that you, so that the chain doesn't rain, rub on the chain rings, doesn't rub on the derailleur, you know? Um, so bikes, bikes like to tout that, that separation of properties from the vertical to the horizontal. Well, so does this, okay? It's got, it, it deflects to 50% of its geometry, you know, like 12, 13, 14 millimeters, okay? 
of, of suspension and the amount of deflection you get laterally, okay, mm -hmm. is minimal, minimal. And so what it does, it accommodates your gait. It adjusts to your gait. And, and if you've seen like ultra shoes, Golden Harper's ultra shoes yeah. that are zero drop, yeah. okay, depending on how much, how pr prominently you are a heel striker, this is variable drop. Yeah. Our heel is variable drop depending on how much you need. You don't want, uh, but what's good, what I did notice very clearly is you don't, it's not a, um, a soft feel of too much cushion. Often a low drop shoe, if it doesn't have adequate outsole rubber, uh, right. will, will deform too much for me and will give a, a low heel, heel feeling. There was no, no sense of that here, which is really, uh, really good. What um, unloaded, what is the drop more or less? Um, I think we're at about nine millimeters. Now, and then if, if you load, um, if you, um, hmm, it's hard, hard to say because people weigh different and they land differently, but you're gonna compress that front, um, front ellipse quite a bit, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It'll, it, it's currently, currently it's uh, 16 millimeters. Okay. And we're compressing easily eight or nine of it. So uh, I'm going to, uh, which, is, which is substantial, you know, suspension travel. And, and I keep talking and I keep going back to the notion of suspension travel because, you know, I was there for the, for the beginning of the mountain biking dual suspension craze. So wait, wait a minute. What's your background? We haven't gotten into that. You, you, you sound like an engineering type to me, but I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I, uh, I'm, a, um, I'm an electronics engineer by education okay. and a telephony engineer by career. I, I, okay. I, spent, I spent most of my career at Bell Labs and Lucent oh. doing telephony engineering. Yeah. But, um, and my brother, okay, who we haven't talked about, but he features prominently in this too. He's a um, he's an aerospace engineer in Florida. Oh. If, if you've seen the uh, deployable antennas on satellites, he designs that stuff. Ah, okay, so it runs. In the so mind. we've both been very <laughs> mechanical our whole lives. Yeah. Very, very inventive. Very inventive. Yeah. Um, and a lot. I love a I love a startup story, but also I love perseverance. You know, because as runners, uh, distance runners, you know, we have to persevere. The marathon. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Right. And, uh, you've really spent your time uh, uh, getting to this point. Along the way, though, was there interest from uh, more uh, from the, the, the regular old shoe companies in what you were working on? And and how did that all work out? You don't have to get into too much detail, but it's such an, a marvelous innovation um, and it takes time to develop. But w why? Why is it taking so long? OK, the. the Okay, now you know. Now you either have to pour me a beer or uh, or get out your notepad and be my therapist. Okay. Um, why is it taking so long? Um, after I started doing structures, after I started doing you know this kind of of, of yep. composite suspension, I called and introduced myself to Frank Rudy. And if you don't know that name, he's the guy who invented Nike Air. Oh, right, 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 right. They'd, yeah, Frank. I, I, I lived in Exeter, New Hampshire. Where, oh boy, where it was first, and and I was in high school, and then in college. College, I think, was when Air came in. But I was running with all those original guys even before Air. Uh, so I tested the first Tailwind. I oh, all kinds of things. So that's I what, had three or four pairs of that first silver Tailwind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with, with 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 the uh, with the sort of you know cream colored urethane midsole. Yeah, yeah. I had those and I cut those in half. Okay. Yeah. I, I was so, you know, and I'd been running on the, the previous shoes that were available and I ended up cutting those in half and I'd been following the progression of that technology thinking, wow, this is really going to become huge. Well, you were a shoe geek and looking uh, technically and critically at this decades ago. So you. Oh, all, all the way back into college, you know, Cool. All the way back into college. And you probably remember the Jim Fix books of running one and two. Yeah. You know, I soaked those up and I was a recreational runner in college and and have been going ever since. And I was also, you know, I've done bicycle racing. 
um, and mountain biking yep. and, you know, motorcycle racing and, and uh, have been into sports car suspension tuning. And so this whole notion of suspension, you know, and the benefit benefits you can get from it, if you ride a mountain bike downhill, you know, on a curve, right, like riding downhill on a mm-hmm. curve on a mountain bike, it feels, you can feel the front and rear working just like you're standing on a ski. Right, right, right. Exactly. And so, and so I called Frank Rudy and, and said, Hey, you know, I've done these amazing things, you know, and I described some of it to him and I sent him some pictures and, um, and he called me back and said, you know what, go find a big brand, go find a big brand that needs something, you know, like what you've got and get them excited about it and then build it, you know, and, and that's what, that's been my whole career ever since he was an ex Apollo era aerospace guy. Right. Frank was. And he said, that's been my whole career and it's been wonderful. And you can do that too. And I thought, you know, I've got my marching orders, you know, I mean, Frank just told me how to do it. And so for way too long, I pursued the big brands because, um, you know, we had a pretty good experience with the the founder of of New Balance, Mm -hmm. Jim Davis. He ran the shoe. He loved it. Uh, But it didn't take off with them for various reasons. And we had an innovation contract with um, Under Armour. Mm-hmm. You know, that's public record, I can say that. Yep. We had an innovation contract with Under Armour for three years and in trying to transfer the very impressive results, you know, we made over a hundred pairs of shoes with them um, in trying to transfer those very impressive results from the innovation group to the footwear group, um, that didn't get off the ground. Footwear wanted to build their own shoe. Oh, I've been there before with Star. Yeah. Uh, and so and so and so yeah. we looked at getting it uh, into production ourselves. Yep. And, you know, somewhere in there, I was doing other engineering work for six years. I, I worked at a medical company um, doing other things. But now I'm back onto the footwear and we're launching it ourselves on the 25th. Cool. And you can, and you can finally buy it. And so it'll be on Kickstarter the 25th. Uh, we're going to put a link to your website. I know there you have a bunch of really cool videos there, some testimonials. Yes. Uh, might just mention uh, some of the testimonials you have. I know you have Dr. Ben Oneg uh, yes. and some others as well. Well, we also have we also have another Ben Oneg is a really good good one to watch if you want to get into the technical biomechanist detail. But one of our expert wear testers um, is also Dr. Mike Leahy, mm-hmm. and he's the guy who invented active release technique, soft tissue therapy. Oh. And he's an ex Air Force test pilot, oh. you know? Wow. Who, who invented ART and he's a 45 time Ironman finisher himself. So, so he knows a thing or two about, about shoes and he's, he's a big supporter of our shoe and he has some good stuff to say about how it works and why it does what it does. So when, when folks uh, um, see the video uh, and sort of in conclusion, who do you think um, who do you think is best suited at this point beyond uh, the many folks that are kind of early adopters of stuff that's new and exciting? Where where are you targeting? Um, uh, who 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 do you think would get the most benefit and joy out of your shoe? Great question. Okay, so the. I've run 10 marathons in various versions of these already. And I think every runner should go buy them, but I totally get it. You know, when we do this market testing, Mm -hmm. you know, out on, out on the internet, when we do market testing, what we're getting from the, from the career runners, the, the avid runners, what we're getting is skepticism. And I totally get it. I totally understand it. You know, we have been lied to so many times about this shoe is going to change your life, and and it never does, you know, and and every time I get mad about that, I cut the shoe in half to find out what's wrong with it, you know, <laughs> I do. I've, I've cut hundreds of shoes apart uh, with my wife's bread knife, um, <laughs> and the people who have been responsive in our testing are the people who are experiencing chronic pain. Okay, mm-hmm. you know they they don't care that 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 you know, they've never heard of it before and it doesn't come from a brand they recognize. Um, if, if, if they think that it will reduce their pain and you think about this, you, that's a big goal. You wanna, you wanna get rid of- In their notes, testimonials, 
what kind of pain are they specifically, what general categories? Okay, so, you know, there, there's this whole basket, there's this big laundry basket called lower extremity yeah. pain, and everything from plantar fasciitis to ankle pain to knee and knee replacement pain and hip and hip replacement pain and lower, lower back lumbar pain and spinal stenosis and, um, you know, post-surgery, right. you know, from, from vehicle accidents and all that sort of thing. Uh, and simple and simple, you know, over overuse, you know, when people start grinding through their cartilage and things like that. Um, those people are, are, are some of the people who are going to be getting in as early adopters. And the people who, you know, the people who come from bicycling and no suspension, they they've responded very positively to the idea of finally seeing you know, functioning rear and forefoot suspension in a shoe. They're all excited about it. Um, and I think, I wish runners were more like open at this point, uh, but to really get those guys on board, we're gonna have to get enough of them built that they can try it on, you know? Sure, and, and uh, you know, they'll be very conscious of weight. It's kind of crazy, um, uh, but it once is- they try it, not, Once they try it, not so much. You not know? so much, I'm telling you, my, my experience was fantastic. Couldn't believe it. Uh, yeah. I did weigh them before, and I was shocked when I ran them. They ran way, way lighter. There, there's sort of a feeling of airiness, um, yet uh, dynamic under the, the heel in particular. Uh -huh. Nothing's there other than suspension. So it's really uncanny. It's it's really interesting. It, it it's 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 weird. It's like a cross between what we think of as normal running and maybe working an elliptical trainer. Right. right. Yeah. It it so so it's um it's really a uh, a wonderful uh, innovation, and we're going to wish you lots of luck with your Kickstarter. And thank you very much for joining Road Trail Run for this. Uh, introduction to your uh, incredible shoes. Thank you so much, Sam. We look forward to being on your website and seeing your review of the shoes. Um, and you know, as we go forward, and we'll we'll try to get we'll try to get the next versions back to you also. Thank you.